can't be stopped. That's the point. You can't be stopped. As many as received him, gave, him, gave he power to be sons of God. Romans 8, 19 says all creation is groaning and travailing and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting for us to operate in our power. Many people will tell you, well, if there's a God, why is all this craziness happening? The answer to that is because you might as well answer the question for them. That's because I'm not operating in authority. Like, I got the power to shut this all down, and I've been half-stepping and being a little disobedient and chilling. I've been doing, like, remember when Simba went out there in the jungle? That's what I've been doing. I'm out there playing in the jungle, eating bugs, <laughs> when the whole time I'm supposed to be running the kingdom. That's probably what it is. It's all me. Well, you know, we don't do that, do we? We get an agreement. Yeah, I can't believe this is happening too. How come God didn't show up and do such and such? Why did he allow that to happen? Why did you allow it to happen? Because you, you're the, he gave you dominion. We read it in Genesis. My son is leasing the ho- our house. It says when we go to Columbus, we don't stay at the house. We just walk in like, whoa. Okay, t- what we want to do is clean this up, paint that, move that over here. We don't do that. We stay in a hotel. It's his house. We ask permission to come over. If they say, well, nah, we'll meet you at the restaurant. Maybe they don't want to clean that day. That's all I know. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's the, we don't go, I can't believe you're going to meet us at the restaurant. No, we're going to meet at the house. <laughs> That's our house. No, no, no. They have dominion. So if something breaks down, they're going to call us up. I can't believe you let that break down. No, 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 no. I can't believe you let that break down. That's what God is saying. This is your, uh, look, I've, I've leased the earth to you and gave you dominion. So when you're looking around, look at yourself. Are you in that platform to operate in authority? Or are you being disobedient? Because the circumstances came. <laughs> I try to stay focused. Uh, All right, so so he wants us to operate in that dunamis, that dunamis power. But he needs us to submit to authority. So when you're hearing the word, if it's an option, what you're saying is, I don't want authority. See, I I, I have this thing that I do. Like, Like, I participate in a lot of authority. Because not only do I take my opportunities to be obedient and draw power, I take yours too. <laughs> so I follow around and watch disobedient people, and when they leak in authority, I be scooping it up. <laughs> oh, there's a leak. <laughs> All the time. I do things, I serve people all the time. Everybody. I'm courteous to them. I do stuff. No, I got that, I got that, I got that. It's kind of greedy sometimes, because like, like I told my wife earlier, you should be giving people an opportunity to draw their own authority. But since they ain't paying to no mind, I, I want to be powerful. A lot of stuff attacking us. So I was like, let me make sure I have all authority. I don't want to be powerless. I want to be like the Pac-Man eating up all four of the, the things, you know. <laughs> You know, like the 1600 level. You know, I want the 1600 level power. Yeah. Well, maybe I don't play Pac Man now. But, but the old people remember the Pac Man. <laughs> you know, see, I, I, I want to eat every pill because I want to be all powerful. So when something's coming at me, I just, I just swallow it up, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to it swallowing me up. Now, I remember that Pac Man, right? The Pac Man people, you yeah, remember that? Young people, go on and play Pac-Man. I know they still got it on a computer somewhere, you know. <laughs> right? That's what we want to do. We got to stop it. You're excusing yourself to be powerless, and then you're complaining about the effect of it. That is the weirdest thing in the world, don't you think? This is an opportunity for power. Now, I'm good. You're in bondage. Man, I'm all bound. I can't do what I want to do. That's what you chose to do when you decided to be disobedient. It's the missing ingredient. Subjection to power. He brought a husband and wife together. He said, submit to one another. Use each other to draw more power. 
Obey those that have rule over you. Use it as an opportunity to draw some power. I put them in authority. I gave them some power for you to draw. Oh, okay, good. That's another opportunity. Like power stations. So I just run around just like, no, I got you. I'll do that for you. No problem. What do you need me to do? My wife, she, you know, I get on her nerves sometimes. She's like, well, babe, you actually are the person in authority. It's like, that's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Like, I'm saying to myself, it's cool. I just get more power. So when stuff come at us, I just look at it now. <laughs> you know, I just look at it. I be like, oh, are we having this conversation? Like, are you, you're not coming to my house, are you? Mm-hmm. No, no, I was just playing. I wasn't coming to your house. As soon as I make the statement, the sickness and disease, oh, I, no, wrong house, wrong, no, wrong house. No, don't say nothing. Just wrong house, wrong house. Be fleeing. Because you draw authority. You think about something and it happens before the, the bondage even gets there. Exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. According to the power that works in you. If there's some power in you. If you're being obedient. I stand to your feet. That's enough for the day. <laughs> I'm sure that's enough to weft your whistle. We just want everybody to operate in power. So the consistency with church and and to be around the things of God, it's not to convict you. It's not to condemn you. It's not to police you. It's for you to get get that missing ingredient. That's all it is. So, so So when it's optional to you, when you let your body run your life, no, we're going to sleep today. But the whole time, your spirit man's like, but can we? No, we sleep in a day. See, you don't even have authority over your own body sometimes. But the scripture says, Paul said, I buffet my body daily. I take authority over my body. You're doing what I tell you to do. The scripture says, walk in the spirit should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The evil desires of the flesh trying to run you around, treat you like a puppet. The things that I, I want to do, I find myself not doing. The things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? This body that's disobedient, this body that's stopping me from operating in authority. All right, well, Father God, we lift you up, magnify you, exalt you, thank and praise you for just what you're giving us, your word, uh, your insight. Uh, just just uh, inspiring us to get what we need to participate in all that you have for us. Lord, we thank and uh, praise you, Lord, like, like, like you said, if we delight ourselves in you, you give us the desires of our heart. You said you give power, power, authority to the faint, them that are thinking or have thought about giving up. You said them that have no might, you would give strength. You said in our time of weakness, when we decrease totally, You are strong within us, powerful within us. So we thank you, Lord, that we're yielding to all your power. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to take a minute to pray. Uh, I want to pray for, number one, I mean, you can't take it for granted, salvation. You know, this whole thing is, is we lost authority through sin of Adam and Eve, and Christ died for us to gain that authority, but we have to subject, connect to his death, burial, and resurrection. So I want to pray for for us to to just uh, connect to Jesus Christ as our Lord, the person with authority that's governing in us that we can subject to and draw from and Savior that's saving us from bondage, saving us from eternal bondage. Uh, And then uh, the scripture says, uh, if you confess your sin, you agree that you sin. My current location is sin. (laughs) <laughs> it says God is faithful to forgive you of the sin. So I'm going to give you some information to take you from there and cleanse you of the unrighteousness, the guilt, the bondage of I was disobedient at one time. So that's what we call rededication or recommitting to God. So if, 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 if that's you and you need to recommit to God, confess be forgiven, get rid of the guilt, and start that acceleration process back into walking in power and authority. I want to pray for that too. Then the scripture says, you should, ooh, it says, he told the, uh, the disciples, he says, go on to the upper room. He says, and, and um, tarry in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem. He says, you're going to be endowed with power. He says, after that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You'll be a witness unto me. 
in Ju uh, Ju uh, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. He says, I want to give you power. He says, now, see, I have to ascend, and once I ascend and I have all that power, I want to pour that on you. He says, and that's when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says, the Spirit shows us things to come. He says, he gives us, the, he shows us the deep things of God. He utters groanings that we can't speak. He prays powerful, perfect prayers that we can't get out of our own flesh. So, you know, if anybody wants to be prayed for to be infilled, we talked about this in 915 class, not the indwelling that you get with salvation that regenerates your spirit, but the infilling when you're filled up with power. How do you feel when you're filled up with power? I'm a basketball player, and when I'm feeling great, I don't think I can miss nothing. I don't care who's there. I don't care who's around, what their age is. I, don't, I, I just don't. I just feel powerful. I feel at peace. And that's the thing. The thing is, when you're powerful, circumstances still come up. But you're like, really? Like, we're not supposed to flinch? That's supposed to change what I said I was going to do with God? Well, God's just got to work that out because I'm not stopping what I'm doing. Right. Holy Spirit will have you. This says I have an unction from the Holy One and I know all things. That power resident in me helps me to walk in the knowing. No matter what the circumstances, I know. I'm not guessing. I know. Oh, well, hey, God loves me and his plan is better than mine, so bring whatever you want. I know what God has said. I know what God's going to do. I know it because I'm, I'm, I'm filled with that spirit. The spirit searches the deep things of God. No man knows the spirit but of a man but the spirit. And that spirit searches the deep things of God. He gives you inside information of what God's original intent was. He reminds you of the instructions you had in heaven, which you knew so clearly in heaven before you was in the mother's womb. The Holy Spirit reminds you of it. You start to sense you're around certain people. You're like, something or something. Like, have I, do I know you? Have I been around you before? Have we had this conversation already? Oh, yes, we did. Just not here. You see, so you know, like something connects, like, whoa, 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 this is not, this is supernatural. And you start to follow that peace. The Holy Spirit does that. Then the scripture says in Psalm 92, 13, it says, they to be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts. Planted in the house, flourish in the courts. Planted, planted, sustained, digging deep into the roots of God's house. And, and, and that, the, pulling on the resources that has you flourishing when you're out there. Not drive by God's house, not stop by God's house, not jumping in and out of houses, but plan it. Right, so I want to pray for those four things. Salvation, rededication, that was a lot of information, uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit, and if the Lord is leading you to be planted at Heirs Christian Center Church. Nothing from emotion, but from unction, that knowing. If, the, if you're getting a knowing for any of those four things, then don't think about it. Don't think about the circumstances. Just move and come up for prayer. Anybody need prayer? Anybody? Raise your hands. Anybody need prayer for those four things? Anybody need prayer for those four things? Anybody need prayer? Well, you need prayer for those four things. I already know because I have a knowing. So I'm giving you some extra time to move on. See, the Holy Spirit, the, the, that, that, that flesh man won't allow you to move. I remember when they used to give the altar call for church, and the the uh, I used to be sitting there and couldn't move. You ever like you like something like feel like something like holding you like like I want to move but I couldn't move. But and then everything would go by. It's like I should have moved, but it's, but that flesh man be trying to bind you. But see, when you make a move, you punk the flesh. So from that point on, you're in dominion and control. Right.